I'm going down to the library, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Gonna say hi to the dictionary, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Okay. Hi, welcome to the New Holstein Public Library. Today we have a DIY event that could be for just adults or your whole family. We are going to be making fairy gardens. Now, this is something that really calls on creativity and whatever kinds of pieces of art that you have around the house that you wanna use. What you're gonna start with is a pot and we do have these available at the library and they'll be part of your kit. Then you're going to fill it with dirt or potting soil. Today we have potting soil that I picked up at the hardware store here in town. And so um, I think they're running a little special this weekend if you wanted to pick some up. <laughs> so the next thing you're going to do is add some moss to the top. Fairies like moss. So you're going to spread that all over the dirt giving it kind of a grassy appearance or maybe even um, so that it looks like a forest, like the forest floor. And you're just gonna spread it around. You'll find that this moss just peels apart if you've never used it before and you can just stick it right on the top of the dirt. This will also be in your kit. And then you can see you just have a green cover, so you're, you have the, your, uh, your forest floor is there. Now, um, I stopped over at Lily B's the other day and she has these beautiful terrarium plants and I didn't take them all, but I did get quite a few of them for us, but she does have some left. And what you're going to do is take them out of the pot and you can see that I've taken my, almost down to the bare roots. And you're going to move your moss just a little bit to the side and then put your plant into the dirt. Just press it down inside there. Adding some more dirt. I'm kind of a messy planter in case you haven't noticed. So I got these three different plants. Um, she has some others there too. So. Um, definitely worth checking out. She's got all kinds of cute stuff there too. Not that I'm getting anything for the sale pitch that I'm making here, but <laughs> <laughs> she does have really cute stuff. I love her stuff. There's always something going on in the whole thing and something to find. I know, I know. Little treasures. Okay, then I have this third one that I got. Now, you can put as many plants as you want in your plant. And one of the things that I've done before, sometimes I've made little fairy gardens that sit outside. They're not for inside the house. When I do that, I often use the plants that I have growing in my yard. So I might just dig up something and add that to the pot. Something to maybe give some height to the plant, to the pot, so that there's there's more um, levels. So then um, I got some chicks and hens, and I know a lot of people have these in their yard. They are, I did not though, I don't know what happened to mine. My husband will tell you they that- They flew the coop? They might have flown the coop with my chickens. <laughs> No, the foxes ate my chickens in my yard. We, um, my husband and I had, have had chickens for quite a while and um, they, we got attacked this year. There are some lovely little fox family that lives on the edge of town. And uh, so now I'm gonna add this big one, I think over here and then I'm gonna leave the front of my pot open. I might not use that other plant because it might be too much. So once I get all the plants in, then it's time to think about what do I wanna to do to decorate? What do I wanna make 
this look like. So I have a little open piece in the back and then this opening in the front. So as I start to put mine together, I am going to use some popsicle sticks. Now I just broke these in half and I'm gonna stick them in along this little hole in the back and I'm gonna make a little fence back here. So I'm gonna stick them right next to each other. They don't have to be perfect. Now, another way to do this is you could leave them whole. You could take whole popsicle sticks and hot glue them together with a crossbar so that you can make your, your fence a little taller. So if you are making a larger fairy garden, you might want to have railings on your fence. So you might glue them together like this and then just glue the popsicle sticks on those cross pieces. So that would be another way to make that. You could also make a little hut or a lean-to with the popsicle sticks, but I don't think I'm gonna do that on mine today because I am going to make my little garden just outside. I am not gonna plant anything that's inside. How about you ladies? You mean keep this outside? No, no, I mean, are you are you looking to make it look like there's a little house? Are you oh, no, I'm doing a path. You're gonna do a path. a path, okay. How about you, Justine? I got a table and chair set uh, for, so it looks like it's outside. Oh, good, oh, and it looks like it, the trees, are, or the plants kind of look like little trees. That is really cute. So that is another thing that I would suggest. Now you can buy little tables like this with little chairs. Um, Amazon sells them. So um, somebody told me that the hardware store has them, but I didn't see them when I went in. So um, when I went to go pick up the dirt, I didn't see them there. So, and they were kind of busy. So I didn't really get to ask much. But um, the other thing you can do is if your children have a playhouse with, for their little dolls, you can use that furniture. And then you can just set that in the little table and chairs. Um, sometimes people put just a chair. I have seen them with, they have um, like little picnic tables and different things like that. So that would be another option that you could do. Another item that you're going to have in your kit are these little flat beads. So I thought um, we have them in greens and blues, some tan colors, some clear colors. Um, and did I say green? And yes. green. So um, I thought in the front of mine, I would make like a little water. So I just am taking the blue beads and making them into maybe looking like a little pond in the front. So you'll notice that I don't have a fairy to put in my garden and that's because my dog ate it. <laughs> so it, 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 it's a hazard of homework. <laughs> it's a hazard of having pets sometimes. Um, uh, she also ate all, the cat actually ate the little plants that I had at home. <laughs> and the dog, she knocked the little fairy down and the dog ate it. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I purchased these. They're really cute. Um, they are little hedgehogs. There's like a mama and a, and a baby. And so I thought, well, maybe I would put them coming to get a drink at the pond. And I have a mushroom. So the other thing I wanted to tell you about this is you can purchase these. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. I think these three items were about $5. So it depends. But the other thing that I would do if I had a lot of, if I had some time on my hands right now is I would make them using Sculpty. Sculpty is a kind of clay and you can purchase it at almost any craft store and it's very easy to mold. You could also use modeling clay. That would be another kind of clay that you could use and that will then dry. 
So you can make little mushrooms that would go well in a little forest scene, or you can make little animals. Um, let's see. You probably can make furniture. Without too you much, right? you could you could yeah I would just get some brown that actually would be a really good idea. So we have some other beads that are available here at the library. We have some little birds. So if you wanted to set a bird in, I'm wondering if I can get him to sit right on here. He might, like he's sitting right next to my little plant there. So a little bluebird, isn't it the bluebird of happiness? It is. <laughs> <laughs> so we could use him. We also, if you wanna go for more of a Christmas theme, we have little candy canes and you could put those in. We have these adorable sticks, and I just think these are so cool. They are. These would make a really good beach scene, like you could make a path coming from your water, or you could use them to... Um, surfboard. <laughs> a surfboard, you yes, definitely could definitely. do that. Especially if you had a bigger one, and then you could put your fairy on the surfboard. Sure. That'd be cool. Yes. Um, they also, I think you could make them into, I think you could turn them into a house. I think you could make them oh, into a house. Oh, true. Yeah. You know? That would be a To trim them and, and make them into a house. Yes. Or at least the door for the house. So that would be cool. We also have some black marbles and some clear marbles. We have shells. And I see that Renee has used her shells on her path. <coughs> so she made a shell path. It's really cute. Can you see that? That turned out really nice. Thanks. Hey, so, you're welcome. Now, how do we, do we water this right away? You would. As soon as you get all the plants in and you kind of have it ready to go, you're gonna wanna add some water. So you notice we have some foil on our pots to make sure that it doesn't spill all over the library. Um, and you're probably not gonna want it to spill all over wherever you're doing it. This is a good outside activity though. So you're just gonna take a small amount of water and pour it around your plants. Okay, you need some? Sure. And that will help to set your plants. I'm sure you guys all know about plants, probably a lot more than I do. So. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you are interested in doing this project, you should come to the library and ask for the Fairy Garden Kit. And we will have that ready for you this coming week. Thank you for watching. Just, did it turn off? Hi all, Dee Hankins here with the announcements for the week of September 17th, 2020. I'm coming to you from my home and I just have a couple of announcements this week. It looks like the uh, library is doing DIY storytime book bundles and those are um, uh, assembled with like five books, a sheet of paper that has some songs or finger plays or crafts, and they're all themed. Uh, and you can do a story time at home since we can't provide those in person. And you can pick them up at the library and we have a few already put together and continue, plan to continue to roll out different themes over the course of the fall. So please check in the library for what we have available. Um, in addition to that announcement, I also wanted to let everyone know that Kiwanis Club will be at the Kiwanis Soccer Fields this Saturday, September 19th from 9 to 1 selling concessions. And so Kiwanis had a lot of fundraisers lined up for this summer and those were thwarted due to coronavirus. And so this is an attempt to recoup some of that fundraising uh, for those monies that go directly back into the community supporting youth um, endeavors. And so uh, please go support the Kiwanis Club 9 to 1 this Saturday during those soccer games at the Kiwanis Soccer Fields. Um, that's all I have this week. Please, please, if you are missing your announcements here, submit them to nhplnews at gmail.com. 
by Tuesdays at 5 p.m. and we'll get your announcement on our next week's agenda. Thank you. Hi everyone, Dee Hankins here coming to you from inside my home. Um, I was unfortunately unable to do the interview, the up close interview with Brooke Bateman that had been planned for this week um, due to being sick earlier in the week. And so uh, that will be in our next episode next Thursday. And unfortunately, there isn't one this week. I did consider interviewing my doggy Frankie. But he wasn't really interested in it, so um, he wasn't giving me good responses. Anyway, my deepest apologies. I'm so sorry. We will be back next week with that interview. And so just tune in next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Three. Good afternoon. This is Anne from the Holstein Public Library. And today's book talk is for the birds. Our first book is The Ultimate Guide to Birding, and it's published by the publishers of Birds and Blooms. So this is a book is a practical guide where you can learn about birds and their habitat and what you can do to maintain a habitat for them in your yard. And it also deals with some of the migration patterns of the birds and um, what you can do to keep them happy and healthy and thriving in your backyard. So this is a very good instru instructional um, book that you can check out at the library. It's one of their annual books. And our, my second book that I have here is more of a stylized book about birds. Um, it um, has personal essays by the author and the language is more familiar. But the book, the photos in the book can't be beat. Like the owl. him. So as you can tell, um, the book's um, photos, you know, they don't have any background. It's mainly all the emphasis is on the birds. So and their, um, their colorations and their feathers and things of that nature. And the final book that we have that's new at the library um, is very popular. But unfortunately, there's a lineup to check it out. So if you like it, by all means, put yourself on the holds list for it. And it's the Sibley's Guide. It's written by the man who wrote Sibley's Guide to Birds. So it's by um, David Allen Sibley. And it's called What It's Like to Be a Bird. From flying, nesting, to eating, to singing what birds are doing it and why. So um, the, uh, the man, who, the author, of course, is um, very talented in drawing the birds. And, and he's a very avid birder and he's very detail oriented on the birds. So um, it should be interesting to know what the, the birds are doing uh, with their time. But I believe that one should be a critical thinker and um, when they when one reads a book and I'm just wondering what some of those birds are doing. So my own analysis is this guy. I wonder what he's doing. It looks like this bird is ready to pick a fight. So I wonder about his nature, you know? Is this the angry bird that's gonna go beating up all the other birds? because you know, he has his little flexed wings. But anyway, and this man, smoking pigeon nearly burns down London apartment building. 
So <laughs> you don't know what bad seeds are in the bird world. So um, it looks like this guy's on a bad path to birdhood. So, well, with that, we'll leave you. And I hope that you feel free to check these books out and have a good day. And we'll see you at the library. I'm going down to the library, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Gonna say hi to the dictionary, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. I'm going down to the line. Shh, pick it out, book, check it in, check it out. Welcome to Back of the Stacks. Oh, wait, no.